We're in uh, Gedling, Nottinghamshire. But Gedling itself is uh, a very old village. Uh, so it's built up it's a town what? now. And we're in Nottinghamshire, which is famous for Robin Hood, Sherwood Forest. Oh, OK. Stories of bandits and all that kind of stuff. So quite a bit of history here, then. But we're not going to Sherwood Forest. No. No. No, we're not. But there's much more than myth and legend in places like this. Although recorded in the Doomsday Book, it's more recent history that could be the real cause for concern. Our team of experts have been called in to investigate a 19th century townhouse with a celebrated but unsettling past. Since moving into the property about a year ago, Lizzie Webster and her partner Jeff have begun noticing increasing levels of inexplicable and disturbing paranormal activity. Uh, things started happening about two or three months after we moved into the property. Um, little things, things moving about, things coming off windowsills, but not just falling, actually flying off windowsills, door handles rattling, children's toys going off. We've heard a noise, and the picture frame has basically been moving backwards and forwards away from the wall for a good 20, 30 minutes. There was no draft coming through. Things happen probably once a week. Sometimes it gets a little bit more intense. I think deep down it can be a little bit scary because you just don't know. You just don't know what's going to happen next either. But there is one terrifying incident that really stands out. Lizzie was touched um, on the bottom of a leg. That really did scare me. If there's something evil in the property that can physically touch you, is it going to get any worse? Is, is anything else going to happen? But having done a bit of research on the property, the family think they could have uncovered the cause of this paranormal activity. Well, we do believe um, it's a gentleman called Arthur Shrewsbury. He was a very famous cricketer um, in the 1900s, and um, he shot himself twice and killed himself somewhere in the house. My rational thinking is, like, he wants to be noticed in the house rather than torment us. If there's more than one spirit, who are they? What, what are they doing here? Why are they in the house? Hoping to provide Lizzie and Jeff with answers, our paranormal team are closing in on the location. The one thing whenever I go to a location is I don't like to receive any information about it because I don't want to be influenced, persuaded. I want to go in there with not knowing anything. Medium Chris insists he be kept completely in the dark about all aspects of the investigation, but he's already sensing things. It's like something just said, how dare you? And I don't know if this is a spirit actually talking to me right now, saying, how dare you? Intrude. So you feel there's a male who yeah. doesn't want us there? Doesn't want us to like, how dare you? Like, this is none of your business. Within moments, the force of this presence escalates. Look, getting this uncomfortable uneasiness, uneasiness, antsy feeling like, OK, I got to get out of here. I got I to leave. I got to. You know, there's something making me really uncomfortable. I gotta calm that energy down, bring that energy down. Listen. When, I, when you get that energy of uneasiness, it usually has to be a spirit that is really unhappy, just wanting to have a resolution. That spirit's wanting a resolution or to be understood. Hey, we're here. It's an old building, yeah. but it kind of looks yeah. out of place, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, look at that, how it's like that. It's that grand doorway there. Yeah. Well, I'm going to meet someone that's been affected by this property, that's actually had experiences here. OK. Find out what I, what she knows. Right. And, uh... and I'll go and meet some people who know about the place and the history, maybe the house. Okay. Uh, right. See if what we can find out. I'll do my walkthrough, I'll let you guys know what I pick up, and then you can tell me about it. Yeah. All right, we'll see All you in right. a bit. All right. All right, take care. But within minutes of getting out of the van and setting foot on this property, the domineering presence returns. 
and I'm overwhelmed by powerful emotions. I'm getting really freaking angry, all right? I mean, just overload of anger, and it's, 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 it's getting really mad that we're even trying to come in here, and I, I can't even think straight because I just got this rage, rage, okay? Um, I'm trying to control it, that it's not mine, let it go, it's not mine. Don't pull up anything from my subconscious, anything, this is not mine, go away. So now I know, just as I was picking up in the car, there was a male spirit here that is really, really angry. And I have to come in contact with this in some way and find out why it is so angry and see if I can resolve that. This is going to be intense. Uh -huh. All right, I'm feeling a little bit resistance right here, which I was feeling earlier when something confronted me. It's kind of retreating, it's moving. <laughs> yeah, it's going up. It's kind of uh, pulling away. Kind of like when you see like an octopus and this tentacle comes out and then it retreats like this. It's kind of what I'm feeling with this energy, this resistance, but it's moving away. It's going upstairs. Going upstairs. And I see in my head where an arrow goes up and an arrow goes down. It branches off. So it's going up here and then something's going underneath here. I'm sensing two different energies here. I'm not sure which to investigate first, but there's definitely something beneath us. This thing will stay downstairs. When they go to sleep at night, it will go upstairs. When they leave, then it will go up throughout the house. This aggressive, almost threatened force needs further exploration. While Chris investigates the house, I want to see what I can discover about this area. My initial research shows the biggest historical and geographic factor around here is connected with mining. Could the paranormal activity in the house be linked to a tragedy underground? Graham Taverner spent 35 years working coal seams beneath our feet. You would start at the pit at six o'clock in the morning it was a big job going down 1,200 feet, mm. rain coming in, water coming in, and it was scary, because I, I was only 15 when I started the pit. And on day one, there was a stretcher coming out through the airlock, and there was a gray blanket over it altogether. And I said to one of the, the fitters, I think it was, What's happened here? It's always dead. They've been mining here since 1899 and were producing over a million tonnes of coal a year by the 1960s, but at a cost. Over 130 men died before the pit was closed in 1991. All of a sudden, from nowhere, a chunk of stone or a piece of coal would come down and squash them. We killed more men here at Gedling Colliery than any other pit. Do you think the men down the mines took their lives in their hands? Every, every, time every day. Down? Every day. Tragically, these deaths happened in the tunnels under our house. But perhaps during our investigation, those trapped souls will respond to a familiar object, the miner's safety lamp. You could tell by looking at the flame if there was a gas there, because you'd have a blue flame above mm. the little flame. It saved many, many, many lives. Upstairs in the house, I'm still following the energy I sensed before we arrived. OK, this has obviously been renovated over the years. It's been fixed up. It's different from those other two rooms. So we got little mixes of history here, one replacing the other. I wonder if that's what he doesn't like. It's 1800s. It's 1800s. I need to find out what went on here in the 1800s, the late 1800s. So people's sleep are being disrupted. Hmm. Okay. 
hard time sleeping, don't you? While Chris and Jane investigate the house and surrounding area, in a more relaxed environment, I'm meeting Lizzie's daughter, Steph. What type of things have you been experiencing? Footsteps, a lot of footsteps. We've got a photo frame that moves quite a lot. My mum's been touched. Um, my other half's been touched. It sounds like someone's coming up the stairs to my room. I wait a few minutes and I'm like, oh, no one's there. Like, how can you explain that? But Steph and her mother have been looking for answers. <sighs> we always blame Arthur. <laughs> um, it could be something else, but we always say it was Arthur. It's always going to be Arthur. Back in the house, I feel like I'm honing in on this aggressive residual male energy. This is different. A lot heavier up here now. When I talk about that resistance, it's up here. But is this malevolent force targeting me or threatening the residents? I have to talk to you. I need to find out what's going on in this house. That's my concern. In Gedling, Nottinghamshire, our team of paranormal experts have been called in to investigate a series of unnerving incidents in a Victorian house. I've already explored the possibility of wider paranormal activity in this area, but I want to see if I can find out more about this strong male presence Chris was detecting earlier. From what Lizzie has said, hers is definitely a house with a past. So I'm meeting local historian Neil Kendrick to see if I can find out more about its famous former resident. Hi, Neil. Tell me a bit about Arthur Shrewsbury, first of all, the sportsman. Uh, Arthur Shrewsbury was born in, uh, in Lenton in Nottingham and he made his debut for Nottinghamshire County Cricket Club in 1875. He was about 21 years old. In his career for Nottingham and England, he amassed nearly 20,000 runs. Um, he played in 23 tests, which in those days was quite a lot because they only played Australia and occasionally South Africa. So it's one of his sisters, Amelia. He sounds like a sporting superstar, David Beckham of his day. I need to find out more. I'm with Steph, Lizzie's daughter, who also lives in the house. So how, Stephanie, how can we help you? I need answers, and if this presence Arthur is like friendly in a way I'm not so fussed my mum does get very upset and scared about it sometimes when certain things happen that you can't explain um, so if we're all happy in the house I know that everyone would be a lot better it's like the spirits trying to gain your attention somehow yeah um, or playing games and tricks yeah it's it's like he wants to annoy us and that part makes me quite scared Having explored the main body of the house, I'm drawn to the garden. This is a lot better. Uh, I didn't expect to see all this grass and everything back here compared to what I've seen inside. When I pick this up, it's like I either want to beat somebody or it's like I want to swing at something. I used to play baseball for years. It's almost like I want to, you know, either hit a golf ball or hit a ball with this which is really weird. Aye. I'm finding out about Arthur Shrewsbury, a cricketing star of his generation. He stayed in our property, owned by his sister, after a suspected nervous breakdown. So like today, fame and fortune didn't guarantee happiness. Despite a successful international career, Recurring irrational and unfounded doubts about his health and ability to continue playing at the top level of the game played on his mind. Unfortunately, this psychological hypochondria proved his undoing. In 1903, fearing the worst, while staying with his sister in the property we're investigating, he tragically committed suicide, shooting himself first in the stomach and then fatally in the head. 
Having completed our initial inquiries... Hey, guys. Hey. How'd it go? We all meet up back at the property. Hi. 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 After inviting Lizzie and Jeff to join us, we can begin the next stage of our investigation. OK, guys, so we've got here what we call trigger objects. So they do exactly as you'd imagine. They are positioned to trigger any spirits that are here. So we've used things that are specific to Arthur Shrewsbury. Yep. We've actually got his photograph here. We've also got a bat, an old bat, very similar to the one he would have used, and a very old cricket ball. But we've also got something else. This is an old miner's lamp because there was a mine not far from here um, with about 35 miles worth of tunnels which go under here. Okay. So again, if there happen to be the spirits of any miners here, maybe they would be attracted to us by the lamp. Just something familiar, something that they recognise. Yeah. Okay. So what we'd like to do is, uh, again, a quite simple experiment, EVP. So EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomena and it's the technique whereby we try to capture ghost voices. Let me stand here. I need you both to ask a question in turn. Mm -hmm. Who are you and what do you want in the house? Why are you still here? Are you angry at, at any of us? <clears throat> Can we help you to move on? And then, suddenly, I sense a change in the frequency of the whole room. Are you angry oh, no, at something there? Are you angry it's at either at someone's death or someone's dead? Correct. If this is Arthur, yeah. someone's death, is he referring to his own or is he referring to something that's happening? We've made a connection. But to confirm this really is Arthur's spirit that we're communicating with, I ask him to identify what I'm touching. Can you tell me what this is, please? <laughs> what? Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard a bit. I heard something, but I don't know what it was. Went... I thought it was a cricket bat. Shut oh, come up, on, come play on, come it again. On, come on, come on, come no word of a lie. Right, come on, come on. Tell me what this is, please. <laughs> See? It sounds like it. It does. That's great. That's great. Right off the bat, no pun intended. I bet you anything, when I clean that up, that will say cricket bat. I can hear I something right. which would go with cricket right. bat, it, but... It's yeah. like right. it's through breath. It's, yeah. Breath. Yeah. it's a frequency it's not... change. Yeah, yeah. OK, so it appears that Arthur is fairly prevalent here. We may well have already made contact, but I just want to do one more thing. There were apparently about 200 men who died down the mine here. So if nothing else, let's just rule it out. Possibly, let's ask the question. Are there the spirits of any miners here? Any men who died in the mine nearby? Killed? Yeah. This is killed? Yeah, it does. Oh, killed. I heard that. This is very positive. It feels like we're making connections with spirits from the right time period. Well, the mine was open for almost 100 years. It opened just before 1900, around 1890. So around the time, actually, that Arthur Shrewsbury would have been here. OK. I think, based on the fact that we've already got great responses, yeah. OK, we yeah. have a big house to cover, and we need to try and communicate with Arthur, yeah. who I believe is leaving his voice on this recorder. Yeah. OK? Definitely. We can catch up with you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much. With a better understanding of what we're facing, Jeff and Lizzie leave. For the next 12 hours, we'll be alone in the house, conducting our investigation. In Gedling, Nottinghamshire, our team of paranormal investigators have been called in to examine disturbing reports of strong activity in a Victorian house. With the property now in lockdown, I've just placed one of these LED motion-activated lights out here. Can you see it on the camera? Yes, we can. All right, lovely. Thanks. The team gather in the nerve centre. So, guys, this is a vast, detached property spread over four floors. So we have eight cameras that are operating. We've got cameras located on the second floor. There's one in Stephanie's bedroom. As you can see, we've focused it so we can see the room on the opposite corridor. And this is where Stephanie saw the doorknob turning on its own. On the first floor, we actually have a camera on the hallway landing. That's between the first and second floor to cover that area of the stairs. We've also got two cameras located in two of the bedrooms up on the first floor as well. 
Moving into the bathroom area, there's also a camera located there. We've also placed a camera in the office that you can see there. Then down onto the ground floor, we have a camera in the living room area. And finally, a camera located in the cellar. So let's grab our kit and make our way up to the first floor. I think the starting point for our investigation is finding where Arthur actually took his life. To see if this area is impacting on the family now living here. This is the bathroom here. Oh, yeah, first room on the right. So, well, this, is this the room that you think whoa. Arthur took his own life? Well, apparently, according to the inquest report, it was the bedroom at the top of the stairs on the right. I'm hoping we can connect with the spirit of Arthur and clarify what happened. Tell me, where did you kill yourself? Upstairs. In. Back room? Was it bathroom Upstairs or bathroom? Upstairs in kids' bedroom. So it's the first room on the left, not the right. Let's go in that it's room. that room. Rempod's going off. Rempod's going off. Where's the Rempod? Is it in the kids' room? It's in the kids' room. Despite what the inquest reported, it seems Arthur is telling us something different. I do not like the feeling of this room. This was one of the rooms that I was saying that they people are. were having a hard time sleeping. Please, spirits, will you come into the room, make contact with us, wherever you are, just yell out. Moving into this room, I become overwhelmed by emotion. I feel really sad at this room. Why? There's a really sad woman in this house. Okay, talk to me. No babies. Don't know what that means. No babies. No babies. It just popped into my head. He left me with no babies. <laughs> they had no babies. OK. I believe I'm encountering the spirit of Arthur's girlfriend, Gertrude. Tragically, she was the one who discovered him in his final moments. Is the female spirit that had relations with Arthur. Are you here? Oh. How do you feel now? Fine. Sa sad, but for her, sad. I don't feel it on me anymore, but I feel sad for her. So we're all focusing, so we're not bringing in other spirits. Who's that? Okay. Arthur. Said Arthur. Arthur, did you die in this room in the house? Sad. Sad again. I can't touch. Did you hear that? Okay. Can't touch this. Arthur Shrewsbury, famous cricketer. Did you take your life here in this very room? Why did you do it? I had to. I thought. That was I thought. Yep. What did you think, Arthur? Sick. 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 You thought he was sick. Who found your body? Did you just... Did, good, did you hear that? Yeah. I did. I thought I was imagining it. But we need to get a few more specifics, some answers. And by these answers, we can help you leave. Oh my god, the rim pulls going crazy. Yep, yep. Clearly, this area is a focus of intense residual energy. Our presence is provoking a strong response. But then, suddenly, everything shuts down. I swear to god, I haven't touched anything. Is the battery working? The battery is on. It just literally, it does, the red light just went to green. So it's like he's ending this conversation. Just as the rim pull goes off. Hmm. And it cuts. Wow. 
So we have emotions being affected, and now the camera. But as soon as we leave the room... Mm -hmm. What the hell was that? was that? No! You are joking. That was a screech. That came from the bathroom. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Do you know what I think that was? What? I think that was the replay. I think that was Gertrude finding him. I think that was the replay. You may be right. You may be right. The light went on upstairs. It did? Yes. Yeah. Right, right, right. No. It seems as though our questioning has provoked a wider reaction in the property. Hopefully, by reviewing this footage in the nerve centre, we can work out where to investigate next. And this is Stephanie's bedroom. The door that I placed that device in front of, that's the door handle that moves on its own. That's strange. And that's the first time it's gone off all night. Right around the time of the stream. <sighs> Let's head up there, guys. Come on. As we go back into the house, once again, I start to sense this negative presence. Am I the only one that's ears bothering them? OK. This is my second time up here. The first time was during my walkthrough. And what did I say? There was resistance. There was a heaviness and it started to retreat when I stated my intent and went somewhere. But now I'm feeling that heaviness again, which we did not feel on the floors below us, nor on the ground floor. And now it's not just affecting me. Right, but mine, oh, 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 I'll go giddy. What? Oh. Sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, guys, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm going to be sick. <sighs> Look at his eyes. Oh. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. shit, guys. <laughs> oh, it just went away. You're going all rubbery, I can tell. It's all right, Whoa. it's, it's going to go away. Relax. It just tried to enter into you. You can completely tell by the way that your legs buckled and your arms buckled that something entered right into you. I'm all right. I don't okay. know, I don't know. Just relax, relax. To understand if this negative force has placed memory from Arthur's suicide, or if there are other elements present, I want to see if I can channel the residual energy here in the property and work out just what happened. Show me where this was and show me the moments before and after. And after you left your body. <sighs> Pain in the breathing. Oh, the lungs can't breathe. Oh. Now choking. It's like fluid in the throat. I just want it to end. But I see a woman standing there now, and he's looking at her. He's choking the whole shoulder. She's standing there. She's trying to pull it away, and he's trying to do it, and she's pulling it away. And he's just like, no, and just... that it ended this way. Feels like he was cheated. I can't leave. I'm beginning to understand. It seems Arthur's soul is in torment, like his anguish and guilt have kept him here. But he wants release, and I can help him with that. They must go. And then I can go. In Gedling, Nottinghamshire, having dealt with the trapped spirit of former cricketer Arthur Shrewsbury. Oh, the lungs. Can't breathe. We want to move on to the other energy that might be affecting this household. Chris had sensed a presence beneath the house, and now, knowing we could be dealing with the spirits of dead miners, we decide to venture into the cellars. But after seeing the damp down there, we're taking precautions. Keep your gloves on. Keep your mask on, don't take it off, and uh, try not to touch anything. Let's go. go. Follow you down. 
See that? That's all black mold. There's a huge amount of damp in here. Look at this. I'm using the SLS camera to visually detect spirits, and within moments of entering the cellar, I see something. Are you recording? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, what? I'm recording. Literally, something just... Uh, raised? Yeah, raised and just disappeared, scuttled off. There's definitely an energy here, but although it's not residing in the cellar, it seems to want to make its presence known to us. While we're here, we'd like to know, are there any miners here? Any men killed down the mine? We know this was a very dangerous mine. Hang on a second. Is it many outside? Okay. Yep, there's, many. There's many outside. There's many outside. Oh my there's God. There's many outside. There's many, many outside. No one's ever communicated with spirit around here before. And they know that we're going to be doing prayers for the dead, okay? So the miners that are stuck here are aware of this and they are coming here. They're not going to come in this house because of what's going on, but they are gathering around outside. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's go. And going outside, they immediately make their presence known. There's rows here and rows here of men. They've got, they're all black. They've got uh, things on their head. They're on both sides here and they're all wearing the same thing. Go ahead and ask a question. Is there a way in which we can help you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Another thank you. Listen. Spirits, miners, do you want us to pray for you so you can leave this place to find peace? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's They're like, go. let's go. They are lined up. I'm seeing them psychically lined up here and lined up here. So they're waiting. So they're waiting go. to be prayed for to go. Okay. These poor souls, trapped underground for decades, can now finally cross over and achieve peace. I know, I, can, I know you're here, I can see you, and I can see you cheering and clapping. Their bodies were lost, but now their souls are no longer lost. They are remembered. They are ready to leave this place. There's all these angels standing around now in their place. All these people in white robes, golden hair. <laughs> it's a beautiful sight. Now all that's left to do is to help Arthur and his tormented girlfriend Gertrude to also finally make that transition. To leave this house of sadness and hopefully achieve their own everlasting peace. Arthur, I ask you to come forward. There are souls from the other side that are coming now to assist you in this transition. I pray and hope for Arthur, for Gertrude, Allow them to find peace and remove the shackles to take them home. Bless this property and this land to keep it safe. Bless this room and this property. <laughs> I can feel the energy changing in here. Pack up, go through the evidence, and see what we've got. It's a lot. <laughs> we all experienced a lot. A couple of days later, we meet up with Lizzie and Jeff to review our evidence. Hello. Hi. 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 I was keen to see if they've noticed any differences. How did you guys sleep the past two days? Brilliant. Yeah, better. Different. A lot better. Atmosphere has okay. definitely changed. Okay. It was lighter. In here? Yeah. The first time when we, when we walked in, it was just lighter. We started our investigation trying to find out more about Arthur. Tell me, where did you kill yourself? 
we decided to go upstairs as a group and we tried to locate the room where he killed himself. There was confusion about, was it in the bathroom? Was it in the bedroom, which is now the child's bedroom? And in that room, I had a very intense experience. I broke down in tears. It was just completely overwhelming. I'm really sad at this room. Wow. I actually was saying, no babies. That was all that could come into my head. And so later, when Chris was channeling, this came through. Childless. 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 We can only conclude from that possibly that it was Gertrude and that Arthur and Gertrude had no children. And that was possibly, maybe, why she was so sad. But we also had more. We attempted to get some answers from Arthur, so about why he killed himself, what happened. Barry was asking questions, and we got this. Arthur Shrewsbury, why did you do it? I thought, that was I thought. Yep. What did you think, Arthur? Sick. 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 You thought he was sick. So he was definitely communicating with us. But then we all experienced something much more disturbing. What the hell what was, that? was that? No. Oh, you are joking. This is the scream that we heard, and it is a female scream. <laughs> Do you hear it? <laughs> it could be Gertrude, you know, when she saw what happened to him screaming. Can the spirits influence your decisions on things you do? Yes, absolutely. If you listen because to them because you have free will. As soon as you mentioned that name, my, my brain just went into overload. My daughter, who lives on the top floor, has got a pet gecko that is called Gertrude. Does nobody in the family know way that would come from anywhere else? It was just, I'm going to call it Gertrude. Did, did any of the research that you or Stephanie have done nope. regarding Arthur? We've not looked at anything like that. We just did Arthur. That's a very bizarre coincidence. So we knew from the spirit trigger session that the miners were here. You know, I was corrected. They didn't die down there. They were killed. And then they said, thank you. Thank you for recognition of that. So part way through the investigation, Chris went outside because we needed to know where they were. And when he went outside, he instantly saw them. There's rows here and rows here of men. They're on both sides here and they're all wearing the same thing. So we knew that at the end of the investigation, when we were thinking about cleansing the house, that we also had to go outside as well. With that in mind, listen to this next recording. This is immediately before Chris starts the prayers. So we do this prayer for you. God, our Father. Wow. God, our Father. It's a cheer. Cheering. Yeah. It sounds like a crowd cheering. So we do this prayer for you. That's crazy. So that was quite amazing. Definitely. It's very, very rare to capture something like that. And the sound of it, it's like it's travelling on the air. Yeah. It sort of fades in and fades out. So like we were quite amazed Collective consciousness of souls all yeah. saying, yeah, we've been heard. Yeah. These EVPs that we've played you are just a selection and a sample of some of the ones we got that helped us to give us a pathway to investigate with a defined outcome. As soon as I come in, I just felt... Oh, that's great. ...normality. That's great. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, long we'll may that, that continue. Yes, yeah. definitely. It'll give you a sense of peace, won't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Knowing that, knowing that everyone's safe, everyone's going to be happy. It's been another successful investigation for everyone in Nottinghamshire. Hopefully, with the spirit of Arthur and the miners now pacified, the family can get on with living peacefully in the property.